former country representative, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, India, Dr. D. N. Thakur, National President, Sahakar Bharti, Dr. Rajiv Ranjan sir, he is presently Director ICRO. Ms. Kyoko Hokugo, Minister Economic and Development, Delegates and colleagues from NPC, I extend warm welcome to all of you. Today, Today we have gathered here for NPC lecture series on food security, perspective from India and Japan. I'm really privileged to have the pleasant task of welcoming the distinguished gathering. Food, we all know, is essential to life. It provides nutrition and energy. India is world's largest producer of milk, second largest producer of rice, wheat, sugarcane, cotton and groundnuts, fruits and vegetables. But the issue of food security is not only concerned to India, but a global challenge. NPC has contributed greatly to the country's socio-economic development of last six decades. The productivity movement in India is needed more now than ever before, especially in the context of the world economic order today, where the nation needs to become art neighbor. As a nodal agency of the productivity movement in the country, the NPC plays an important role. So with these words, I would like to invite our Director General for felicitation of guests. May I request Sri Sandeep Kumar Nayak, BGNPC, to welcome Sri Suran Supande, former Secretary for Great Government of India with three sampling. I request Sri Sandeep Kumar Nair, DGNPC, to welcome Sri Tomio Shichiri, former country representative, UNFAO India, with green sapling. <laughs> May I again request DGNPC to welcome Sri DN Thakur, National President Sahakar Bharti, with green saplings. Thank you, sir. Now, I would like to give presentation on NPC. NPC is a national level organization under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India, providing training, consultancy, and undertaking research in the area of productivity. NPC was created with noble purpose of growth and prosperity of India. It was formed on when Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, father of India, Space program led Indian delegation to Japan in October, November 1956 to study productivity related aspects. On the recommendation of the delegation and Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, a landmark decision was taken to establish a premier organization to provide impetus to productivity movement in India. In this way, National Productivity Council came into existence for providing all necessary support to various sectors of Indian economy. NPC promotes enhancement of productivity culture in nation. NPC also implements the productivity promotion plans and programs of the Tokyo-based Asian Productivity Organization, an intergovernmental body of which the government of India is a founder member. So this was about the genesis of NPC. And the area of expertise we have various domains like industrial engineering, recruitment solutions, research and innovation, agriculture and allied sectors, policy formulation and advice, productivity for Atmanirbhar Bharat, organization development, then also project formulation, monitoring, evaluation, as well as IT applications and energy efficiency. These are the area where we give our services. We have pan-India presence, therefore we give all India service. All together, 28 local productivity councils virtually cover all the states and we have 12 regional directorates 
one training institute at chennai which is known as ambedkar institute of productivity and our headquarters is situated in delhi there are a few strength unique strength of npc like we are pre eminent organization of government of india and normally we are assigned work on nomination basis we are giving total solution under one roof focused professionals as consultant we try to give time bound delivery track record highly focused on msmes we have multi disciplinary expertise we are also having capability to take up large scale surveys and pan india level projects we also give third party assessment and audit services to various government departments and uh, also we give services to international uh, for as international expertise and we are having outreach also these are the achievement of npc these are the few noteworthy interventions like uh, organization restructuring for productivity enhancements both for private as well as service sector green lean plus industry 4.0 and advanced energy management then we also give post environment clearance monitoring certification of environment auditors and managers and water audit services then we also give recruitment solution online and offline inspection monitoring and evaluation then also ease of doing business we give online training and fives certification we also provide national productivity index related study quality improvement in healthcare and then circular economy and waste management so that was about the uh, npc as a whole we are here representing agri business group and these are the area of ex expertise of agri business group we give, uh, give project management advisory through evaluation monitoring and impact assessment of schemes development consulting through descriptive studies in agriculture and allied sector then we also give services related to formulation of agriculture and rural development plans database development for agriculture and allied sectors and also productivity measurement and improvement studies for agriculture and allied sector besides this we also give capacity building and awareness program through workshop as well as seminars these are few achievements of agri business group we have successfully completed more than 250 national level studies in agriculture and allied sector then different Uh, we have given monitoring and evaluation related studies to uh, rkvy nhm which is national horticulture mission soil health card scheme then intensive dairy development program dairy entrepreneurship development program then jute care and then finally monitoring and evaluation system for national food security mission these are the few latest achievement which we have acquired like npc has been selected as end implementation agency for pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana and then we have also uh, uh, <clears throat> done comprehensive district agriculture plan for 40 district of uttar pradesh we have outreach of more than 50000 farmers in last 5 years through various studies and we have also done productivity measure, measurement studies in dairy rice milling pulses flow and beverages we have done more than 500 capacity building program in the field of agriculture these are the few projects which we have undertaken like baseline survey of indian fisheries for department of fisheries impact evaluation of buffer stock in policy of pulses for department of consumer affairs likewise impact evaluation for npdd rkvy and then preparation of cdap then impact evaluation for national jute board 
So these are the studies which we have un undertaken in the last five years. So with this, thank you. Now, I would like to invite Sri Sudhansu Pandey, former Secretary of Food Government of India, for setting the context. Sri Sudhansu Pandey is an IS, retired IS, officer of 1987 batch in Jammu and Kashmir cadre. He superintended from the services as Secretary, Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution, Government of India. So please. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much uh, for having me back here. Thank you also to see the question of the Director General of the Diet. And also distinguished experts and friends here. The food security ever since the year started talking the addiction of the world. And how critical food security is for the development of the country. And it triggered consistently in the SDG goals. And uh, now by 2030, the goal is zero hunger. And uh, if you read the latest reports, then the unfortunate COVID pandemic 19. For almost two years, has taken to one of the targets in the target. And uh, there are reports that indicate that uh, target is seeking away. Everything is actually interrelated. Food security uh, does not come by the end production. Uh, we can see that in the case of India. Uh, in 1947, when we started, uh, after the independence, our total food production uh, was around 50 million metric tons. And today we have reached a target of uh, almost 30 million metric tons. Uh, last year, actually, we were one of the largest exporters and figured among the top 10 of the daily exports are touching on most 50 million US dollars in the export. Yet, the food security uh, continues to hold the challenge because the definition of food security also includes nutritional security. So you would be food secure and also uh, you are short of that. Second important issue that comes is the accessibility. So you may have some plus in production, but the access to food is not ensured. Uh, and access depends on so many factors, including the Income. And in India, uh, as we have a very typical scenario, we have uh, almost a dozen states which are food surplus states, and all other states are food deficit states. So, which means that the logistics, supply chain, our transportation, stocking of those food things becomes extremely important. In the public sector alone, we had almost uh, 91 million metric ton storage capacity before the pandemic uh, started. Uh, and if you uh, include the uh, private sector, then this goes to about 170 uh, storage capacity. And we realize that uh, uh, the, unless the storage capacity for the manager also happens in the supply chain, the wastage of food things uh, will be high, uh, and which will again pose a challenge in meeting the target of food security. But I'm very happy that today 
Uh, this talk uh, workshop is being organized to bring in focus to learn the experience from other countries, especially Japan, how they have been tackling the issue of food security. India, as I said, has become already uh, surplus in food production. It is one of the leading exporters in various agri products. And uh, we are on course of meeting already uh, zero hunger, at least we can claim that uh, we have met that target. There has been no starvation death anywhere in the country, even during the pandemic period, which for a country like India is not a small achievement at all. Because then a uh, country goes under the lockdown, it's a lockdown, even then the delivery of food daily was ensured across India. The Honorable Prime Minister's program, special intervention, looking at the importance of food security, was the Prime Minister's and uh, not the world realizes. I made a presentation in Rome uh, recently this year. Uh, and we brought out that India has given $100 billion direct food subsidy during these two years. And this is something uh, which is not a small goal. Many countries uh, uh, do not have a budget of that kind for their food uh, sector. And this is, has been the world's largest food subsidy program. And it was because of this intervention that during the worst of the time, uh, the food security for every citizen of India was ensured. Uh, food grains were available, and very recently, one of India has uh, completed the exercise, uh, which is yet to come in a public domain after various consultations. There's a schedule under the National Food Security Act, which is called Schedule 2. And Schedule 2 uh, has the aspirational target of moving from food security to nutrition security. And after the enactment of the Act in 2013, now, for the first time, Schedule 2 has been revised. And that revision <coughs> has been very extensive. There are all experts by bodies, including uh, the National Institute of Nutrition. Hyderabad, uh, Ministry of Health, ICMR, or other expert bodies have been engaged. And the schedule actually uh, has incorporated for the first time uh, certain very really important features, which uh, are focused on the use of locally available uh, resources, food resources, nutrition resources. And uh, increasing access and processing of those resources will be requirement of food security for the country. So I'm very happy that this agenda has been uh, taken up. But I would say that it's a long-term agenda, and uh, uh, the food security requirements and challenges will continue. Nobody had to realize pandemic, uh, and once it came, actually several countries, if you read the NPO's uh, report. And all of those uh, 760 uh, million people, uh, they are on the verge of uh, starvation across the world in this parts. <laughs> and uh, therefore, it's a very serious issue. And for a country of the size of India, with almost uh, 140 crore people, uh, 1,400 million people, <coughs> Uh, the challenge is huge. He cannot depend. We have seen very recently that when, because of the climate change for the first time, the wheat production globally fell and the availability of wheat uh, became less. And it was compounded further by some <laughs> geopolitical developments in Russia and Ukrainian context. Uh, we have almost 40 million uh, metric ton of Wheat produced from the previous crop could move out of the country. It led to a huge shortage. And even in the countries in Europe, uh, for the first time, the rationing of uh, a food grains happened. And uh, the prices spiked to a level where 
it became beyond the reach of poor countries. And uh, so that is what has shown that if you are not self-sufficient in these critical areas, then supporting a population from that party abroad also uh, can pose a very serious strategic challenge also. So once again, I think uh, uh, increasingly in the general at all is present here or taking of this important thank you. We are now moving ahead with the presentation for today's lecture series. For the session, I would like to invite Mr. Tony Shichiri, former country representative to the and here to deliver us insight into food security perspective from India and Japan. President Shri Santahas Pandey, former secretary, Director General, NPC Sundiuti, and Dr. Najibji Anja, Dr. D.M. Chakur, and all respective distinguished guests and colleagues. So I'm very grateful to be here today in our presentation. Also, I'm very happy to work in, uh, together with the Shuri Sundibuji uh, in Associated since 2018. So I think that today uh, I'm thinking, uh, today I think the lunch like a brown bag is a little chili, and then NPC covering different areas of the industry, agriculture, many areas. So, what I should do, uh, I was thinking, please, next slide, please. I'm thinking uh, how I can more explain uh, what is the food security, what is the agriculture, because it's everybody different understand. So I also now with the different now the lunch time, now with the present with the different lunch, how my lecture good digest in your stomach. I think this is also a very important point I'm thinking. So starting point. How uh, achieve the food crisis? I think it, uh, before I was a child, everybody talking about crude oil will be depleted. How many years? Five years, ten years. But now, a food security or food crisis, we are eating every day. We need everyday food for our people. I think this is. Very important thinking what is a food crisis. Already we knew it, uh, COVID is a 19 pandemic. I was here also in basic. And then this is a supply chain crisis. Uh, already, I think it's uh, uh, already he mentioned already. And this is a global, uh, like a, for example, another like a global chip shortage. Like a computer. So some information says 100 shipping board is stuck in Shanghai, cannot uh, take luggage, uh, cannot take a uh, loaded or completely like demolished property. Even like my friend said, I'm already ordered some Toyota car, but delivery will be delayed de six months because of no like chips or semiconductor. So I think this kind of the situation we're facing is the COVID-19 pandemic period. What is the global food security? So many years, especially escalation after the Ukraine crisis. But please remember, 
o International Report for Human Agency. All these mention even food crisis, even before the Ukraine crisis. I think this is a very important point. This is not a uh, to the Ukraine and Russia crisis, but even before what it started. This is a very important point. And then I think I go to the little bit uh, 2008. This is also a soaring food crisis issue. At that time, I was in Afghanistan. We put them on the ground. Then I think it, uh, during this time, uh, like right now, each country have uh, each position considering each country's national security. So this is also I'm coming, I'm, I'm going to touch on. And then third uh, point is the agro food system. Now many people talking about agro food system rather than food security. The agro food security is starting to extreme. Like for example, agriculture starting soy for land preparation, soy, water, sheep, fertilizer, agriculture even, and then harvest, post harvest. And then uh, Mandi or silver goes to the more value chain and supply chain. Then come to the labor. So then sometimes it's the uh, food waste. So long chain for uh, this is the uh, we say our food system covering all system. Then I think is the last point I hope I, I try to more easier to understanding excessive food like uh, dependence from another country like Japan. We have a big problem. If something happening, we are like uh, no food. Okay. I think this is uh, very important if the food security is longer than stability. In the food security plus energy security. Now a lot of problem is uh, like uh, Russia, like this is the natural gas pipeline. Food security. Energy security, health security, this is come to the national security. So I think this is a very important, this is a three point. We have to think all the talking about or what is for security. This is direct linkage to national security. Please next point. So this is, I think, it just uh, uh, after. Uh, like this is the Ukraine uh, production, wheat, corn, and other. This is a uh, yellow, blue, and another uh, color. This is production above graph, below graph with the export. Of course, after the conflict, of course, uh, like uh, a sharp uh, went down. Please go next slide. So this is, I think it's just coincidence. I also wrote, this is uh, like a journal, journal of the world affairs. This is the last month published. This is a global agricultural system outlook from the Ukraine crisis. A study of national security concerning a directional change of India agriculture. I think this is already uh, published, but this unfortunately is in Japanese. But, but I try to do some essence, including in my presentation. Next, please. So, food security, I think, is the Sri uh, Sundaraji Pandiji already mentioned. This is the food security, I think, is uh, some definition. Uh, below is uh, we have also the Japanese government definition. Our government definition is more detailed more put in more government responsibility clearly mentioned on the basic act of the food agriculture rural area. Next, please. Uh, this is, I think, uh, this uh, later we can share this screen, uh, you can read it. Uh, this is our in Japanese government, uh, like securing a, a stable food supply. I think this is also covering to the International APO definition of security. Please, next. 
And then I'm going about to say the time, uh, time series of chronological order of what happening to the crisis. 2008, 2007. This is the story for the crisis. Uh, maybe if you remember, I was in Afghanistan. I was also like uh, running with the Afghan government and donor agency. And please, have to, yes. So it was what happening, declining growth agriculture production, declining global grain stock, higher energy price, raised production cost, increased demand from the emerging economies. This meaning China, India, they need more food. And then speculation financial market, and then biofuel. So this is the biofuel like a corn, huh? the ethanol transfer to the more biofuel. So this package affects to the uh, food prices, prices, like solid food prices. But what happening? This uh, is back to the sky. Then this is what happening, you remember, this is Arab Spring. This is trigger for Arab Spring with the political and economic instability. This is, we have to uh, always in our minds, very important points. But many people already forgot. Nobody talking about 2007, 2008. In Afghanistan, we are always talking about food grain. Stock. But another country is never given. Indian government in kind a donation to the Afghan government. I remember Amishi. Next slide, next slide, please. And then uh, this is uh, just before uh, COVID. Uh, UN organized for the, uh, uh, sorry, this is uh, during 2020, 2001, uh, COVID pandemic. So we are very facing with the lockdown. Not only India, so many countries, even Japan also. So government implemented a lockdown, internal travel restriction, even here, stay, stay, stay travel was restricted. So this is, I think, with uh, lots of supply chain uh, disruption, even Monday also. I think it's uh, like a finish of the uh, like a vegetable also cannot go to the market. So I think it's also like a food waste uh, after harvest. This is a strong question now. This is the food security. But uh, he mentioned Indian government how to support people for United on food supply. I think this is only one country. But this one is actually not exactly clearly reflected to uh, like uh, report. Report, I think, is later. I mentioned the later uh, coming up. And then 2020, 2021, it was the UN Food Security, uh, UN Food System Summit. Uh, I think that maybe you remember uh, last year, I think in September, uh, Prime Minister Modi also participated. This one is the under frame of the SDG. This is the part of the already uh, pre plan system, not based on the COVID 19 pandemic. So, this full system summit, I think, is all clearly mentioned like already food uh, crisis is already anticipated. Also, SDG 2 target. Like a zero harm or another SDG. Already they say very difficult achievement at 27. Already, already mentioned, officially in the UN Secretary General mentioned, already like uh, almost gave up. Then what's happening is the UN uh, headquarters in New York pressure to the each member state. You do this more stimulate. Is a national level like a strategy to achieve uh, SDG goal. So it was action track one, two, three, four, five. 
of the time is the national convener is the DDIO, uh, Professor Ramesh Chandji. So India government selected, I think it's a number, uh, number truck, action truck number four, advanced equitable value. So this is also related to uh, doubling, uh, double farming. Please next. But then, uh, many, what's happening? This is uh, read by USA, the statement roadmap for global food security, call to action. So this is a call to action. This is a part of the uh, SDG agenda. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven point they mentioned. Each country has to follow this roadmap at the top down. So including, I think, is a, a humanitarian uh, support is required, in kind of donation also required. Also, this is uh, not stop export to the grain. So this is, but this is no any binding, just only for statement. So this is also uh, may also mention from the uh, US led. This is the uh, action plan. Please next. June. Then June, what's happening? US Department, USDA announced their own domestic framework transformation system based on the uh, like a system. And also, maybe they're thinking already, they are thinking, but exactly the same good timing, Ukraine Russian crisis. And looks like really bad. And then this is also very interesting point. Uh, this is a lesson learned, COVID, already COVID lesson learned. What is the strengthening supply chain very important? Locally produced, locally consumption. And then strengthening is the, like uh, stock. I think this is also this USDA domestic framework information also reflected to the international announcement. So I think it's a, uh, a colleague, I think it's a new one working in NBC. Always they can get very good information to understand what is the international meeting announcement. What is another government official framework do? Then maybe some good idea uh, for you to maybe writing paper or uh, a report to the your boss. Okay, next, please. When this same June 8, this is the UN Secretary General issue uh, this book. This book is uh, by UN Secretary General Global Crisis Response Group on Food, Energy, and Finance System. I think this is also available in the website. I think it is a have a look. This is all you can understand. And then, what you may be doing? But you may be just uh, globally say, but who uh, security is everything responsibility comes to the each country. If each country no capacity, no capability, it but this is a very important point. India is different. Next year, India will be largest population, more than China. Okay? And then, uh, high uh, self-efficiency rate. China, lots of import. Lots of uh, grain import from USA. They feed into the pork. If no food, everything finish. So this is a very important point. We have to uh, work with uh, uh, like uh, supply and then production level of India compared to another country. So I think this is uh, also this is a very like a global record. You know, small country from Africa or Asia. I think this is the covering is a whole country because this is the UN member country, one of our country. Uh, move to the next. Then this is uh, just one. This is every year the state of the food security and nutrition. Well, this is we say so big effort. 
Normally, this level always at the 14th of the October World Food Day. But this year, earlier publishing because the Ukraine uh, crisis. It was a June. But this report, not exactly reflection to the India's direct minimum support. Because it was this uh, direct is a full support already done. But this is a little bit a very tricky like, statistic analysis. So I'll come to the next page. I think this report is available to the internet. So especially if this is the table one, uh, please next. Table one, yes. This will be the whole table A11, page 140. That side is the China. That side is the India. Some data is black. Because we are a huge country. Okay? Some small country, like uh, compared to the like Pancha area. Hmm? Even like the uh, UP, UP is the 200, more than 200 million population, more than any country in the EU. How to data aggregation to the one day? So, this is also this we have to see what is the statistic data can say. And then, please next. Ah, sorry, sorry. Then, <coughs> this is uh, like this food insecurity <coughs> experiment. Experience scale. This statistic methodology is Yada statistic. Yada is, you, I think, it is, you know, Yada is uh, from the US base. They call it to the Hello, how are you? You have a food? Then check mark. Yeah. But the uh, India government officially not accept this methodology because uh, statistically bias. Because it's a sample size, I don't know about the sample size. But this is also very important to understand given statistics compared to another small country. Small country both have one port. Big country, one port. Sometimes this creates unfairness. Next, please. Then, coming June, this is before G7 summit. It was uh, the German G7 last June. Then before G7, I think the also Global Alliance for Food Security was established. It was led by uh, German and then World Bank. I read in the last uh, uh, like uh, G20 Bank in Indonesia. This is also the follow this Global Alliance for Food Security. But this is also what the, the alliance meaning uh, support humanitarian assistance, don't go follow to the WTO trade and then not stop to the export, etc. Not go to the like a food or weaponized. Food is not weapon. So this kind of the, like a, a mention announcement. It was uh, June 24, just before G7 summit. Then next. And then this uh, G7 summit after, uh, this also, this is the World Food Security. This is a, a coordination hub with one of the working groups. I think this is a very important point. Uh, this is also uh, one of the function to give information. Next, please. So now I think that this is almost like uh, coming to the conclusion. So deeply concerned now on parallel and multidimensional crisis now. Not only for security, energy, climate change. Suddenly, rain, energy is a better condition. Health security, also COVID, financial uncertainty. The India, there's a robust. I remember 2020, many uh, there's a robust 
Abrum dan Pakistan, Seluruh Pakistan. Tuan Tuan Semar dan Anima Bijis. So, conflict. War. So, I think this is always conflict and war coming to the food becoming weaponized. I think this is that we have to think what is very important to food security and then this is going to be related to political instability and then national security. Next, please. So I think this is, uh, I am already talking about um, this uh, summaries. I think it's a due to time. I'm not uh, going to go to this detail. But most important, I can mention, there is no any alternative method and methodology. Only self-sufficiency in food production. Domestic uh, self-sufficiency in stable food production is bad. So India is already good position. From Japan, we have a self-sufficiency rate around 36 percent. Next please. This is uh, starting to, to uh, 1965. Uh, uh, so this one is the beginning 73%. But now 38%. So this then import dependency is the 62%. If disrupting supply chain in no import, what happened? This is a crisis. Very serious. But the reality is people like thinking or oh, easy going, easy go. But always something happening, conflict, some area you stop. International relationship with a uh, friend country suddenly against going to change. UN system of support. Always each country uh, like uh, more negotiation skill, power, and then relationship. Okay, next please. So this is, I think, the statistics the India, what is the uh, uh, projected food demand. I think this is the projection the 2035. It was the expected uh, population growth. For each cereal, meal, animal food, vegetable, how much metric of production required? This is already projected by the government. Next. Then this, I think, is the sectorial share. This is the like GDP. Uh, this is the come from the most state. Agriculture statistics. Also, this is the population. So population is uh, quite high, of course, 40%, maybe 50% agriculture or rural area overworking. Okay. Then next, this is very next I, I can tell you more detail. So now I think it I refer to the uh, community of double income. I think this is the uh, I recommend you should read this. Uh, Agriculture should be primary industry. Of course, you are working steel industry, many industries, but primary industry should be agriculture. But my point is, agriculture is not only primary industry. Agriculture should be including like a food system abroad, production to consume. So create secondary agriculture. So secondary agriculture absorb population. Because it's some, uh, when I, I, I work in with some uh, economist from France, uh, she had, so she had is the French, this is organization. So he was saying, always refer to the OEC development model. OEC development model is agricultural population, later service industry or another industry, absorb. But in Japan, the agriculture is maybe 
But the in Indians in the agriculture or rural areas, the 40 or 40 percent population, how they can absorb everybody go to the IT industry? Impossible. So how expansion of the secondary agriculture, including uh, like uh, <coughs> biological products, new technology using residue, using research and development injection, agri investment. I think this is a very important area India can do. So in Japan also we are now almost very similar approach. We say six industry approach. Six industry approach meaning primary industry one times secondary industry two times Partially or third industry three, one time, two times three. Uh, mathematically, is a six, the six industry. So this is also uh, Japan government also try to stimulate new area of the agriculture. So this is uh, I think is somehow is a similarity. But India should be agriculture. Wider agriculture, I'm talking about now, narrow definition of agriculture. Wider definition of agriculture should be primary industry to be another country. Next, please. So, this is uh, our ecological region. I think this is almost last slide. India, very diverse. This is the valley from north to south. Different, uh, like, uh, uh, weather condition, different crop, and then different temperature, different harvest season. This is one country. I think this is for me each state or each panchal area or each district for me one laboratory. Respect one laboratory, uh, like a cultivate or produce different agri products. I think this is a very good point. And then also we are facing the climate change, climate shifting. So this is also more flexibility to change it to another region to another state. I think this is very important. This is a for me, this is a big expense like a laboratory of the produce. Next please. So then this this year, I think uh, I'm working with the DTIO and then especially uh, agriculture professor Ramesh Tanji. So we publish Indian Agriculture Tower 57, uh, covering all aspects, transforming agriculture, uh, and then I think it's a dietary diversification, nutrition issue, food safety, and then climate risk, science and technology. And then this and disease related to COVID. I think this is the and then a natural farming system. I think this is also available to the like uh, free download in a PDF file. Also, I strongly recommend to have a look so you can be immediately expert of the agriculture of India. Next, please. So thank you very much. Namaste. And then next year is uh, India is a uh, different presidency and also international year of the meeting. I think this is a good, uh, excellent opportunity to be in of the security and the outdoor system. Thank you very much. Namaste. <laughs> Before we proceed for discussion comments, I'd like to give the kind of uh, Mr. Sijiri. Mr. Sijiri and Japanese National Forum, Osaka, for some recent policy from Yale University, USA. He wants to gain the province from Rokisha University in Japan to work for the Rural Development Department of the World Bank in Washington, D.C., USA and for the Japan International Cooperation Agency in the Sarwan State Forest Development Authority in Malaysia. The State Institute of Research Science and Technology of the State of Amapa in Brazil, the Environment Department of the State of Rondonia 
in Brazil and the Ministry of Animals, Environment and Water Resources in Tunisia from 2018 to December 2021. Mr. Shichiri was the annual representative in India. He was the recipient of the Mina Ganjan Singh Award and the 40th session of the FAO conference in Rome, Italy. So now, uh, I would like to invite Dr. D.K. Thakur for discussions comments. Dr. D.K. Thakur, former deputy MD of Tenzin. Sorry. Sorry. Thanks for the my introduction is done. So, because time is I think now the month. First of all, I would like to thank the NPC and the whole SPC Knights are for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to do so many things. This is an area which is very dear to me. Now our problems have been defined, I will not talk about that. We all know very well that India actually cannot afford on food security. To miss on food security, cannot afford to miss on uh, energy security, both. And uh, I personally feel and not only I feel this is the fact that the future of food and clean energy security lies in the agri space. So the future or the future good driver of the country, which my organization feels that that way everybody feels is in its agriculture, is in its uh, rural economy activity and nature based economy. As a, uh, India has a big asset, that is its population. That's a big economic asset that this country has built to utilize. I'm talking from Indian perspective that this has applied equally to other countries. We have not been able to capitalize and gain from the largest economic asset that we possess, and that is our population. So if we combine both the natural resources available to this country, and another natural resource that is population, I think India will never miss on two plans. One, food security, another, energy security. And this is amply demonstrated post this whole crisis that India can be the leading food supplier to the world. This is the country which has the potential because we are not at a speed level of productivity. So there's a huge gap what we can do and what we are doing today. So for this, I will straight away come to the solution that the organization which I am belonging to right now is advocating as is doing on the field. We are trying to establish cooperation because the future of liberating these two extent lies in cooperation. Or cooperative form of business and there is no other form that can optimally combine these two assets for gainfully gaining the leverage and strength that the country has, which is the potential that we have. So we are uh, not advocating with the early, but we are now doing at the ground, setting up cooperative village models called Sakar Grants. And we have already started on the model. The model is very simple. The small piece of land cannot be productive. We have the traditional strength of having the joint family system. Our family system, India, India I think is unique in the world that we have a family system or joint family system. We still have a village which is centered around this concept. The Indian villages which are predominant. Even if you go now, despite all the rules and the values and world values, we still have the social system. Everybody is somehow related to each other. We have to just rekindle and reunite that feeling. So, with that, if we have that uh, cooperative model, cooperative is a matter of feeling, it's not a matter of just some law. So, that way we can pull entire natural resource into a collective framework of development. So with that, one unit productivity can 
and it, 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 kept, it will be going down. Then with that, what the body that we are suggesting and we are now practicing is that in every village, as uh, Pandeji was saying, that we have to say manage the food. Okay? Not only just produce, but we have to manage. We cannot afford to waste food then because every grain that is wasted here can be used somewhere else in the world. Why do we waste that much? So if we have in the village a cooperative society, which does cultivation of the entire piece of land, manages the natural resources in a collective way. And then we have uh, um, storage because now we have moved to a district and we have no more safety and baggage, we don't have information system. So we have a storage house. Every grain that is produced goes to that uh, cooperative storage house, which is most modern. The farmer, the producer, immediately gets in his account if he so desires. The base and the spirit is by the government. So every farm, because that's the major problem in our country, that has been displaced on discounts. The farmers are afraid that I, I may not get any spirit. So that is a guarantee, not a sort of legal, but a social guarantee given by the government itself that bring the grain and you will get any spirit. Whatever is there. It is stored there. And that way we have concept that we are now talking about is National Cooperative Food Cream. So in credit, every grain goes into the village. We don't have to transport much of the grain from one place to another. Because traditionally our country has contingency crop planning. I know my area where predominantly rice growing area. But there used to be a crop just before rice. So when a flood comes, the crop is there, and that is all lacking. So we, of course, in our area, it was known as an inferior grain. And now that has become a superior grain. So ragi was the more contingency crop. Nobody suffered from hunger. That way we have to revive that also. That can be done again through cooperative growth. So this circular economy that uses cattle, natural resource, farm, and the human being all live together in a productive mode. That is going to be the solution that is for this country in future for ensuring food security to everyone, remunerated price to every producer. The country has to, and right now, unfortunately, of we are mostly from other country. Right now, what is that? The thing that I am saying is around 80 crore of our population is dependent on government subsidized food. I personally, it's free food. Personally, I can categorize everyone who needs free food as a breaker. Sorry, I'm using the wrong word, but this is breaker. Because only a breaker and incapable cannot be himself. We are the country of the makers. We cannot be the country of breakers. It's only the management deficiency that has led us to this state of India. We have to transform this. Move to the people, make them capable, make them believe that they are capable of producing. I know half an acre of land, if produced efficiently, can easily feed the family of five people. So that's you know, because I'm basically from the farmer family, and still have a farmer. Half an acre of land can feed the family of five throughout the year. But that half an acre cannot be cultivated in isolation. It has to be cultivated in totally in the whole. So this is what is the cooperative model that my organization, so we are not talking about the problem. Problem is well known. We have good food security, country needs food security. But we are now moving to how to ensure food security through people themselves. So that this amount of around five to six lakh crore that is given as a food subsidy is at least reduced to half. We seem to reach this amount and do something else. So this is the model. We are calling national cooperative food grains. So every grain gets into the food grain. No matter if it is one kg, that goes to that stores. No matter if it's by saying half a kg, it goes to the stores. Even if I'm producing it goes to the stores. And through digital network, country knows in which store, in which go down, in which packs of cooperative, how much grain of which quality is available. In distribution, 
then this quality of distribution also doesn't matter. Right? If I am producing, my bill is producing the quality of grain. My villager will not mind consuming that. So let the villager who needs free food can be given from that storage itself. Why to transport from say Punjab to Bihar village? There's no need. Only Punjab doesn't have responsibility to feed this country. There's five or six states. They don't have the responsibility. Responsibility is also for Uttarakhand to feed their population. Responsibility also belongs to say not the state, state any states. They have to feed their population. So we have to move from this regime to that regime. Well, everybody takes the responsibility to feed their living and they can do it, believe it's possible. So now I'm just talking here. It's possible, but we have to combine these three things natural resource, natural asset, and available knowledge. Everything has to be converted into an economic asset for climate. Time is up. There are many things to say, but right now, the only concept that I am advocating is we have to have national cooperation to treat. And on this, my objective goes very seriously. We need to have this. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, For the following remarks, Mary, our right, she is a Hansu family, promised to be full. Thank you very much. I will be very brief. Uh, I think all the time is about the last thing. All the aspects and all the dimensions of the food security we have been touched. Uh, uh, there was a small mention in the call supporting sustainable food consumption as a very important uh, point. But one thing which uh, actually the world is the same, uh, and I very strongly feel and we advocated and also at various fora, that the food wastage uh, is not captured in this entire uh, thing. And if you see life side change that has come, especially in the urban areas, uh, it leads to a lot of food wastage and food wastage. Uh, is uh, as bad as a green wastage. So if our program also covers how do we actually minimize the food wastage, then the sustainable food consumption becomes uh, something which is uh, achievable. The example of Japan, how the uh, food security has come down over the years in case of India, it's just the reverse. Uh, our population of independence multiplied by about say four times, and food production has gone up by about say point five times of independence. Our longevity also has almost doubled from that uh, time. So our food systems uh, are in place, and not many people know, uh, even in India, that today uh, from food production to food procurement, food movement, food storage, and food distribution. Everything is digital in India. Uh, I, I, when I again made a presentation recently in Geneva, uh, nobody would believe that each plot of the land is now on digital map. Procured quantity is clearly traced to the field of the farmer. And its movement, the storage, everything is tracked. This has happened uh, during the pandemic period. The complete uh, uh, digitization and completion of chain happened during this period. And many countries are now keen actually. Uh, four or five countries we have already started working with who are keen to put that kind of system in place so that the local production, what uh, uh, was mentioned by my colleague here. And unless each country is self-sufficient in production, and how does the each country become self-sufficient? That each state, each district, each farmer has to produce whatever he can produce, depending upon the climate, climate condition. And we have to provide that support. 
So I think uh, uh, the discussion on cooperatives and that might be already working with the Department of Ministry of Cooperatives very closely. And village level storage plan uh, has been made. Uh, with the NABARD, we did the geotagging of entire warehouses available in the country. We have uh, 100, 1 lakh 5, so 100,000, 5, uh, 5,000 uh, warehouses available in the country. They all have been mapped and geotagged. And now they are relations. Uh, and further, we have identified the storage gaps across India. And the plan is that roughly about uh, 150,000 uh, warehouses will be able to cover all the production and uh, storage gap areas. So, uh, this discussion has been very stimulating. It has uh, brought out uh, the experiences. But the fundamental point, as has been very correctly mentioned here, and food security is something which actually, whether big or small, no country can afford to have. Well, this is basic to human existence. And if you do not pay equal attention to food security, then in the times of crisis, uh, actually, the nation's security can get compromised. So thank you very much to my colleague, Asanti. Uh, a very, very uh, good discussion and very good platform to launch from where long term uh, perspective for India's food security can be built. There are many areas we have not been able to touch uh, today, but I'm sure in the course of time, all those areas will be covered. Thank you. <laughs> Just a I would like to invite Sri S. P. Singh, Good Health Alley Leaders for more dog thanks. I think uh, Mr. Tomio uh, wants to present the book uh, uh, that he just uh, mentioned uh, to NPC as well as others. On behalf of NPC, Secretary uh, Dr. Sukla Pal can come and present the book.
security prospect in, in India and Japan. Uh, I am also thankful to Dr. Vivian Thakur, National President uh, Sarkar Bharti, for sharing his views on uh, food security and also discussing cooperative models of ensuring food security. I am also thankful to our Director General Mr. Sandeep Kumar Nayak sir for giving uh, 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 this opportunity to the three business for capacity building of uh, officers of NBC. I am also thankful to uh, Madam Peyoko uh, Okio Hopugo, Minister of Economic and Development, for attending this uh, lecture. I am also thankful to Sri Rajiv Ranjan, Director and Apple, Ikro, for spending his valuable time and uh, attending this uh, uh, very good lecture. I am also thankful to my colleagues in NPC for attending this session, this session today and uh, my colleagues from the administration, IT Division and CG Secretary for making uh, necessary arrangement for this program and making this program a grand success. So, thank you all. Jai Hind. Jai Bharat. Thank you.